All right, so we just did some really basic color holds. We're just really overdoing this coloring, right? We have flat colors, then duotone, duotone hard edge, where it's nice and crisp. Really the only duotone hard edge that's left is like right there, right there. Duotone soft edged, which is when it's gradated and softened. We have a lot of that. Then full spectrum color, which brings multiple colors in. Oranges into the greens pinks, greens into the blues. It's subtle, but it's all there, this full spectrum augmentation. And now we're playing with things on top of our sandwich, on top of the black bread line art that's still protected. And these are called color holds. So the first thing I did is just made a duplicate of the line art, and then I started painting on top of it to get the highlights in the helmet. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually color the black lines. So I'm gonna make another duplicate, or actually I don't even need to. It can all be on the same layer. Because I rasterized my vector, I can now select just the black. And I'll, I'll uncheck contiguous, so it selects all the blacks in the image. And then I can say edit fill, I don't even need to do edit fill, actually. I can just do image adjustment, hue saturation. This can be more fun to see it in real time. And then, because it's black, there's no way to saturate black, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on colorize. And colorize is gonna allow me to lighten it and give it a really strong color. So I might wanna give it a, an overall kind of bluish color that's a little bit lighter than black. See how that works? It's changing the black into that blue. But what if I want like the plumage, that's what it's called, what if I want this to not be the blue? What if I want that to be kind of a greenish color? Well, I can select it, and then I can go to Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and I can swap just the, the outline color around the plumage to a green, and I can lighten it, and I can saturate it. I can even push it more towards a yellow. Right. So you have full control. It's still digital coloring because we're coloring behind real or implied outlines, but we can also add additional colors on top of the outline. What about the beak here? Maybe I want to select that, just that line art. and I want to shift its tones. Maybe to more like an orange. Or a yellow or brown. Then if I'm gonna do that, I might as well change the feet since those aren't blue feathers like the rest. Remember, good use of Photoshop means good selecting. And I'm just using a lasso tool that's feathered at three pixels to select the line work I wanna change the color of. And I'm all doing it, I'm doing it to a copy of my black bread layer. So this is an olive on top. You do not want to rasterize your actual vector. We went to a lot of work to create it as a vector, so we shouldn't have to rasterize it. That would be bad. I'm going to leave that as a darker green.
like so. So that's without the color holds, that's with the color holds. And then I can augment them further. They don't need to be just a solid flat color like my black line art was. I can dodge and burn them. I want to burn maybe the inside of the mouth, the underside, the overside, the back of the feet, the underside of the plumage. And then I can burn the blues, maybe under the head, under the wing, for the logo, the tail. And there we have it. And while we're doing dodging and burning, I might go back to my full spectrum layer and I might dodge some of the midtones and put some stronger highlights in there, like a strong highlight on the beak, strong highlight on the face. Strong highlight on this back wing. And on the pin feathers of this lead wing. I don't know. You can overdo it. I can certainly overdo it. Things to try. And if it gets too messy like that and you want to soften it, there's also the blur tool. So all of these compositing skills that we learned early on in the semester for our landscapes and for our creatures, we can use here. And the smudge tool. This is just all on just my full spectrum layer. These are That's where you can really kind of cut loose with these kind of painting color experiments. None of them are required. I'm just showing you all the different ways that illustrations are digitally colored behind real or implied outlines. OK. Let me see, I'm going to take that color hold and I'm just going to dodge, because all I did was burn, a little bit of the wing here, since it's kind of coming into the light, brighten that up. Brighten up the highlight on the plumage. It's in a few areas, and on the helmet. really looks reflective and maybe around the eye uh, but but burn it right inside the eye so that pupil is still a focal point okay so coloring just goes on and on and on until you're sick of it and we'll learn even more special effects that have to do with printing, like how to separate it into color, CMYK color, with the next project. Because for our next assignment, we're going to add text to your colored spot illustration to make posters, do poster design and type design. And that gives us another chance to really play with all aspects of it. So I'm going to save it just as my PSD, my Photoshop document. And then to upload it to Canvas, I want to turn off that white background. 
so that what I have is a, a PNG file, like a sticker, just like when we did our creature collage. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if this is a spot illustration, it isn't always going to go on a white background. So if it goes on a dark background, sometimes you have to add an offset, especially if you're keeping black outlines. And you might remember adding offsets for your black logos. So to do this, I make a duplicate. It's like adding extra bread on the bottom. I make a duplicate of the blank white layer, and then I say edit fill with middle gray. This is just to test out my colors on different backgrounds. And you can see how the color holds are shaped then. And then I'm going to make a duplicate of that, and I'm going to say edit fill with black. And the best spot illustration is going to look good in all three. So I think my color holds of the highlights look a little too strong when on black and gray. So I'm just going to take my eraser, go to my color holds layer. I usually mark color holds as red because it's kind of special effects. It's the olive on top. And I'm going to take a soft brush at a low opacity, and I'm going to kind of eat away at them so they become more like they're star-shaped. At a low opacity. Because I still want them to look like they're vibrant and shiny, but I don't want them to be these perfect circles. So that looks a lot better. And I might think, oh, well, I'm up close here. I'm going to do some painting in the eye. Why not give Nico a green eye? And I'm going to layer up some of these different greens. with my paintbrush. I can always burn it. So now Nico's got a green eye. Now how does that look on gray? Yeah, those color holds look pretty good on gray. But maybe on gray, I want to darken the color holds on the beak a little bit. So I'm going to use my burn. I'm just going to darken this a little bit. A little bit more. And maybe around the edges of the eye, I want to darken that color hold. If I want to limit all of my color holds, if I think they're too strong, I can always just take the opacity on them down. And that just brings it back to the, the black outline. Right? So there's lots of reasons to do things as separate layers. So maybe I'll keep it about a 90%. OK, so it looks good on gray, looks good on black, looks good on white. So this is a finished spot illustration. Save it as a PSD, say save, and then I'm going to turn off all my backgrounds so you just see the checkerboard. Check your edges, make sure there's no coloring that went outside the lines. That's not a color hold that you intended. So the only coloring I have outside the lines is very slight, and it's on these reflections or, or highlights. See how they soften the outline. Okay. And then you're going to save as a copy. So save a copy. Come on. And then you want to save it as a PNG and then put that up to Canvas.